Hey guys, so, well, finally getting this bloody update done. Um, I've been going to do it for quite a while, and anyway, my non-motorbike bloody life has gotten in the way a bit, so we've pissed that side of things off and back to motorbikes. Um, I was going to introduce the, the man cave, but the last video you've already seen it all. All the, all the signs and all that kind of stuff that I got. I got most of the signs um, off eBay. They're just reproduction ones. And uh, yeah, just set up some more shelving and put up all the bloody products and bits and pieces. Um, I, you might remember me telling you about the, the map that I got out that I had over at the other place. I've brought that over and I'll, I'll show you what that's all about. And uh, yeah, give you a rundown of what's going on with the DR. I've got, I've got a big to-do list which I'll show you. Uh, so I'm going to get stuck into all that. But uh, anyway, so... I'm just here enjoying the, the fire at the moment because it's been pretty bloody cold. It's been getting down to uh, zero degrees. And um, But anyway, all right, let's get into it. All right, guys, this is the uh, things to bloody do list. Um, as I've said, just the list of things bloody to do to this DR is just getting uh, longer and longer. It's not bloody getting shorter and shorter. So I decided I'd write it all down because there's just so many things I've got to do. Um, so that's, that's my list, and basically everything that's on this list, I want to get it, uh, get it done pretty quick now, because I've got this adventure thing that I'm doing with, um, with Ken, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, and I've got to get all this done before we do it, which is in September. So, um, and look, I know, sorry guys, it's taken me so bloody long uh, to be getting all this stuff done, but it's just when you're doing the videoing, um, you kind of like got to plan more and set time aside and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I've been dragging my feet a little bit, I suppose. But anyway, there you go. All right, so basically what I've got to do is I've got to raise the front forks on that because, as I've said before, it was lowered at the front, which I didn't realise because I'm an idiot. I've got to remove the upper chain roller. So that's that thing that everybody says, pull it off the DR, it's, it's a pain in the ass. I've read some things, there was one forum where a guy mentioned it and said, oh, you know, it shouldn't really have to be taken off and, you know, it was designed that way and it's more, you know, people having their chains too tight and that's when you get the problem and it was actually, <laughs> it was shot down on the forum. But, um, so, I don't know, I mean, obviously Suzuki put it there for a bloody reason. Um, but the way I see it, everybody else is saying remove it, and by removing it, it doesn't, nobody said there's been any ill effect from doing that, so get rid of the bastard. So that's got to come off. The safari tank, which I think a lot of you guys are bloody waiting to, uh, to see put on, so that's got to go on. I've been holding off on that because I've been, you know, obviously when I went up to Myrtleford, you didn't want that big bulky bloody tank on there. So that's why that's been held off, and before I put that on, I've got to run um, the auxiliary light and the, and the 12 volt thing. So uh, the foot pegs, the lowering quit, that's going to be something really quick, I can get that done. The sergeant seat, which I'll give you a shot now, I'll have a look at this. So I've got this come in the mail. That should be uh, a whole lot better for my ass. So we'll get that on. Obviously, that's a a simple job, rip that off, put it straight on. Frame guards. I'm gonna. I haven't actually got the frame guards. The frame guards are to go just on the on the on the side of the frame. From what I gather, they're not actually there to protect the guards, like from a crash or anything like that. When you wear MX boots, your motocross boots, um, and I've seen pictures of it on the internet, um, and I've actually got it on the engine. You can see on the engine there. Um, I've already got wear marks, and the same thing happens to the frames, so I'm just going to get them, they're not too expensive, so I'll just whack them on. Um, lead light rear blinkers, because I busted the other one, so get those small ones that sit in, and if it, when it goes over, because not if, it will be when it does go over, um, I'm not going to bust a blinker again. The 12 volt power outlet, and the auxiliary lead light, I'll show you that light again. remember I bloody did a little test thing so that's that's the light there 
just a little one and it'll just maybe you know I'm really happy with the with the DR light when I um, adjusted the light um, I was yeah really happy with the way the light was but that'll just give me a little bit of extra uh, what else we got the Wolfman tank bag I've got that new tank bag I went for the really small one so basically that's it there I think that's the, uh, what is it, the Wolfman Expedition no, Enduro tank bag. The reason why I went really small, um, not because I'm smart or anything, but because what people have said is that uh, if it's too wide, when you go to stand up on the bike, it interferes with your, um, with your legs. So, gone for the small one, so that'll go on. <coughs> What else? Ah, the heat deflector and my little trusty kitchen job. I've now gone and got I went to Bunnings and um, actually first of all Ken, when I went on the metal fit, he gave me this little roll of uh, foil or it's really thin aluminium but I've got another use for that which I'm going to show you. But yeah, just got this stuff. So it's, fairly thin but it's quite substantial at the same time so I'm going to use that on the on the pannier and I'll put it on there and bolt it on somehow so that's still to be done hey check this out this is a cool sound timey kangaroo down sport timey kangaroo down it's a bit of Rolf Harris for you um, Oh, so, not that yet. So that's the heat deflector. Aluminium protector for the rear brake line. Now, what I bloody noticed, um, the brake line, you see the brake line there? Um, I think with this new, this different pipe, it must bend and it's a little bit lower than the, the, than the stock one. And I think when it, oh, I'm not too sure, because I can't remember seeing it like that. I don't know when I went to Myrtleford that that's when it's happened. But you can see the burn mark on that plastic thing there, and then there's also a rub mark on the black um, pipe there. So I'm thinking, shit, I don't want to, um, to bust the, the brake line. So what I'm going to do is actually grab this stuff, and I'm going to wrap that around, around there, just to give it that little bit of uh, extra protection. So, you know, obviously it's not the stock pipe, so, it might, you know, must be just that little, the tolerance is just out. What else have we got? Lock title accessories, yeah. I've done most of it. I've just got to go through, do a few more of them. Keep you guys happy and keep you off me bloody back. Oh, and SC1 under mudguards. I was reading up, come across a thing on the internet. And uh, they say to spray that, that uh, SC1 under the guards so that when you go to wash it that uh, everything all comes off a whole lot easier have you got the dogs here, Matthew's here he's come to share the man cave fire <laughs> alright um, so onto the board yeah so this is um, just a board I made up and uh, I just bought a map and cut it out and, and what I've done is just wherever I've been on a motorbike I just put all these little pins along the routes that I've, uh, that I've done so as you can see I've still got a bloody long way to go to get uh, all over Australia I mean in my lifetime I'll never be able to uh, travel all the roads here in Australia they're just, they're just uh, they're too bloody long but looking at that, the only state, so we've got Western Australia over here, you have South Australia there, then you've got the Northern Territory, a lot of you international guys up here, that's where all the bloody crocodiles are. Um, up over here is Queensland, of course they have crocodiles up, that, up, that, up there too. Then we've got New South Wales, Victoria and then uh, little Tasmania down here which isn't part of mainland Australia so 
The only state that I haven't got to is the Northern Territory. I've done all the other states. So this next adventure uh, will see me just tip into the Northern Territory. They'll be able to uh, put that one <laughs> on the board. Um, and then yeah, I'll just all the patches and all the photos and bits and pieces. A little bit outdated at the moment actually. I don't have a lot of the new stuff on there. And it's, um, yeah, it's a bit of bloody fun. This other map that I've got, which I'll show you. Yeah, so this map, I just happened to come across it. Uh, I mean, now I'm just out at the bloody shops and, hey Presto, here's this bloody huge map. And I thought, what a bloody great idea. I mean, it really shows, you know, all the roads. And of course, normally I'm bloody kind of like looking to go out back. So on the littler maps, you don't see all, all the tracks and, you know, the dirt roads and all that kind of stuff. So that, that's really good. I suppose that map's uh, the memories map. And uh, this one is uh, the dreaming map, I suppose. Um, yeah, I come out here and bloody... Nay's always coming out the back and saying, oh yeah, you're still looking at that bloody map. Um, yeah, just trying to work out what the next great bloody uh, adventure's going to be. So, uh, yeah, so that's what that is. Alright, well that's pretty much uh, everything except for the next adventure, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Okay guys, so the next big adventure is um, the Simpson Desert Ramble, um, which I'm doing with Ken. And uh, I think we're going to, it's in September, we haven't exactly got uh, the date planned just yet, or set. Um, Ken's, Ken's actually done, worked out the route, and uh, it looks to be very good, and it's going to be the hardest bloody uh, thing that I've ever done on a motorbike. And it's most probably um, one of the toughest rides you can, uh, that you can actually do in Australia, so I'm really kind of like uh, stretching myself here. Uh, but I know I've got the right bike to do it on. I know I've got the bloody stubborn bullheadedness of fucking trying to get, get through things. <laughs> and hopefully uh, by then I can get a bit of skill up uh, for, doing, for doing the sand. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a, uh, it's going to take us, what's it going to do, it's going to take us, I think it's 11 days, so 10 nights, we'll be starting from Bendigo, and it's actually going to be a loop, and I think it's uh, 4,500 kilometres that we'll actually cover, um, and majority of it is going to be um, on the dirt and sand and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'll give you, I'll show you on, the, on this map the, uh, the route. Alright guys, so I'll try and keep this pretty simple. If you can hear what you, you think are sheep, it's actually next door neighbours have got a couple of llamas. And that's that bloody noise. So I'm hoping between that and the fire crackling you can you can hear what's going on. Um, so as I'm just gonna run over this really quickly, um, because I will do obviously a video. We're gonna the whole trip that we're doing will obviously video it like I normally bloody will do. Um, Basically, Ken's in Wangaratta, he's going to meet me in Bendigo, we're going to shoot up through Mildura, cross through, through here, um, uh, Renmark, Burra, come up through here, into the Flinders Ranges, um, take some, cut, um, some tracks out into the Gamble Ranges, and then we'll hit Lee, Lee Creek. Well, this is a fairly main road, but it's actually all dirt, so from here we'll go up to Maree, uh, Williams Creek, follow the uh, Unadatta track and the old the old Gan Railway, which isn't uh, used anymore. Follow that all the way up to Unadatta. We'll continue straight up through here, and what we've got to do is we've got to get to Mount Dare because um, that's um, the only spot that we can get petrol before coming back down around here to Dalhousie Springs, and then going along here the French Line and then up here catch the QAA line over to Birdsville. Um, I know all the Aussie guys watching this and knows all the stuff, but I know there's a lot of international guys that watch this. So Birdsville's basically a one pub town. It's a very iconic pub here in Australia. Um, once a year they have the Birdsville races, which is uh, horse races and camel races and stuff like that. Um, this is all pretty much big stuff for um, four wheel drivers and stuff like that. Yeah, motorbikers get on here as well, but this isn't a maintained road. The only reason why it's maintained is for um, 
is because the four-wheel drives and, and stuff get on there and that tra track just keeps bloody um, staying there, I suppose. Um, Ken knows all the stuff about it. Some of this shit that I'm saying might not be 100% correct or whatever. Um, but through here, we don't get any petrol. From Mount Dare, we come all the way through here. We're actually going to do a little line out here. There's what they call the lane gum. And all this is just... There's a th over a thousand sand dunes we've got to cross. And they range from about three metres to once you get over here, they get right up to what they call Big Red, which is about 40 metres high. And that's, that, that'll be our last big one uh, to cross before we get into, into Birdsville. Um, but there, yeah, out here, so this is the bloody desert sand dunes, there's a bloody gum tree. And it's just growing there, and it's not supposed to grow there. It's actually one that uh, normally grows in flooded areas. So we've got, I think it's about 70 k's to get to it. So as well as having about 500 and something k's to get across, we're adding on 140 or something k's as well. So we're going to have to carry all the um, all the petrol. So that's why you know we're going to have these big. 30 litre um, tanks, and we're going to have to carry extra on top of that as well. So anyway, we'll get to birds, we'll follow this up around here, and this is all still bloody dirt roads, sand roads, and um, we'll come down here through uh, Cordillo Downs, which I think is uh, Australia's largest sheep, I think it's sheep uh, station, through down around uh, Inner Minka, Birkin Wills Dig Tree, and then we we'll basically come all the way down here to Cameron's Corner, which is where I made it to when I did the Great Australian Ride um, with the cruiser. <laughs> I only got to Cameron's Corner, so it'll be good to, to come in that other way. And, um, and then we've actually planned to go back out this way because Ken wants to see me go through that. Um, you may have seen the video. So I've got a couple of things where I'm going through that, um, that dog fence gate. Um, limping and <laughs> so he wants to see me coming through that bloody gate not limping and uh, and then yeah we'll come all the way Broken Hill and then back down to back down to home so that's uh, that's what the plan is but as I said I'll give you more details on all that kind of stuff and uh, as we go along all right guys so that's uh, pretty much it I'm trying to talk in between these bloody llamas bar and away over there um, I, think I've, I think I've pretty much covered everything um, that I wanted to cover. Um, I, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned, um, which I have mentioned before, um, Ken has um, bought a, a DR650. It's a blue one. It's, I think it's done 5,500 kilometres. I can't remember what year it was. I think it was a 2007. It might have been. Um, so he's, he's um, so it's blue, he's actually going to change it to white, he's bought, he got really cheap um, all the plastics, which will basically turn it into a white DR, and um, it's already got a bash plate and a windscreen, a few bits and pieces like that, he's getting the same bags and racks set up, he's getting a safari tank but he's going to get the, the clear one, which is most probably the smarter option, um, but as you guys know, I like black, so... Um, so it'll be good to have the two, you know, the one black DR and, and the white DR. Obviously in the footage and stuff it'll be very distinguishable between who you're looking at or whatever. Um, so, so he's having a bit of, bit of fun uh, getting all the bits and pieces and, and putting it all on. Hopefully, because um, he's in Wangaratta, it's, um, oh, how far is it? It's, I don't know, 100k or maybe 150k up the road or something like that. Um, it's, uh, it's a bit hard to kind of like, you know, catch up too often and uh, get some footage of uh, his stuff. So I hope to uh, get some footage of uh, him prepping his bike and, and stuff like that. But we'll, we'll get into that uh, when we start doing the videos uh, with the lead up to, the, to that big adventure. Alright guys, um, so that's pretty much it. All I can say now is keep on riding. <laughs>